Greetings everyone. So good to see all the wonderful audience out here. And uh, today I'm going to tell you a story. A story which is uh, born in uh, rural Telangana which is uh, a Narayan Pet district. It is uh, near, it's around 160 kilometers from Hyderabad. So let's get started with that. And as you can see, my presentation's loaded up. So all of you uh, can follow through. I'll just, uh, many of you actually here have uh, thought of setting up an enterprise or starting something new or even, you know, all of us think that, okay, let's, let's be an entrepreneur, right? There are many, and there are many entrepreneurial stories. You hear, you hear a lot of startup stories. Many start, but many don't finish the race. Why is that? Can all of you think about it? So that is what I'm going to talk to you today. Uh, it's about what we learned with a startup called Arunya, which we started in Narayan Pet district. It's basically a startup which is uh, by women and uh, started uh, during the COVID times. With this, I'm also going to tell you the leadership lessons that I learned running this enterprise or guiding them. So the first thing in any management uh, lesson which will be taught to you is to start. There is changes there and until you change yourself, nothing moves forward. All of you will have great ideas. All of you will have uh, a wonderful idea but you will keep on procrastinating, think, keep on thinking about how to go ahead with it what to do. The first thing you should do is just start. Just think uh, and just jump into it. So why I'm telling you this is as a lesson is it's one of the management lessons that I learned and I could practice. So during the pandemic time, it was a complete unknown. And uh, uh, like I said, choose courage over safety. All of us are very happy and uh, safe in our comfort zones. If we, uh, we think, okay, how do I start or how do I move forward? Like I said, change is always scary, but growth is important. So change your scenarios, change your uh, strategies, move forward. And then now I come to the story, real story. This is how we started Arunya. Arunya is a company, like I said, which was started by women. Narayan Pet is a traditional district, which was known for its weavers. So uh, it's quite famous for its weaves and uh, uh, well known for it. But during the COVID times, the first thing we faced was there was no market. Everything was shut down. The first phase of COVID, all of you remember, there was no uh, movement anywhere. There was a complete national lockdown. So people could not move out and people could not move out of the district. And most importantly, these small time weavers who had very, very small stocks with them. They were suffering. So what did they do? They all, uh, we all decided, okay, something has to be done. Otherwise their livelihood is lost and they would suffer greatly. Though government was supporting them, it's ultimately you yourself who can support yourself. So that's how all these women took the risk. They, they took the chance. They moved completely out of their comfort zone. And there were about 400 women who were weavers and also women who could do some stitching and these kind of things. They all banded together and they started selling masks. This was in the first phase of COVID before all of, uh, uh, this was just after the WHO issued the advisory to have uh, masks. Uh, that took cloth masks. So they had stock, they were not selling saris. They were not able to sell their uh, cloth produce anywhere. So what to do? Sudden change in their uh, uh, production. So they moved to making masks. Was it, was it going to be successful? Were we going to sell it? Were we going to uh, market it? All these were risks. All these were unknowns. Even I didn't know as an administrator there what to do. Even the uh, uh, women didn't know. And the market was also completely new. We didn't know who would buy from us. But we still did it. 
and luckily we could sell almost uh, uh, 80 lakhs worth of masks uh, during that uh, pandemic period and uh, all of them like i said 8 lakhs sorry all of them uh, uh, turned out a good revenue they could dispose of their stock they did not waste their money which was their investment and they did not instead they gained a new experience and a new business so this was the starting of this company called arunya so after covid and then uh, during the later phases of covid multiple other companies came forward and then there were you, as you know there are different masks which are there in the market so we had to move on the market was closed again so what do you do <coughs> so we move on so the second part like i said the lesson there is no other opportunity again the first opportunity we capitalize good they could survive that that was just good enough for uh, maintaining the subsistence of all these women and uh, give them a daily wage which was about 400 500 it is uh, average daily wage these people could get so next what selling masks was over these women were all uh, self sufficient till that period of time but again they were used to better opportunities earlier they 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 used to rely on middlemen to sell their products they they couldn't move on uh, from their place of uh, working so they did, what do they do next so what's the next lesson that we learned that is the lesson we if there's no opportunity coming forward there's no opportunity in terms of uh, some pandemic which is waiting for you so what is there find an opportunity this is what all of you when you uh, do your uh, uh, journey to your startups or any of your uh, entrepreneurial ventures or even management ventures this is where you do there's no opportunity there's no door then knock one make one so we decided that we will uh, all these women who are weavers and uh, trained in different aspects like uh, stitching or embroidery or painting all these uh, women came together again and they formed a company a private limited company a private limited company let me tell you in a rural area in a very backward rural area which was traditionally known for its south migration not much of entrepreneurship not much of development so we decided let's go with this then there were obviously a lo lot of people who laughed at us who said who will run this company government cannot do it you as administrators cannot do it so how is this going to run so then we decided we're going to train women in management 12 women took up the lead we we found some uh, good well educated women and they took up the lead and they formed this company they are the directors of this company today we did handhold them in terms of uh, technical support or giving them some skill learnings but finally they did it on their own and that they could do coming out of their comfort zones coming out of their traditional knowledge base adopting change and moving forward so this is our lesson number 2 and then let's move forward so again like i said the company was formed a handlooms handicrafts and food producer company which was what all was produced in this area so we all got this and we started training them so training them everybody thinks everything happens at once it never does all the big things that you see or a big bang that you see with a lot of companies or a lot of uh, uh, enterprises is something which was added little by little value by value every day so we started in 2020 then we moved from uh, now they don't make masks anymore though they started with masks this company uh, and the woman they started with masks but now they don't do that they they sell mostly artisanal products they sell weaves they sell hand uh, hand uh, handmade food products so this is their usp now so how did they do it they started learning little by little 
they knew the traditional technique of weaving they knew some stitching they knew some uh, uh, painting they knew uh, some other uh, packaging crafts but what they didn't do no they didn't know marketing they didn't know how to package their product which suited to the market needs so all that we added on that was skill development every day so uh, we've invested in almost uh, some uh, uh, 300 upskilling uh, uh techniques we we help from the government also but mostly it was the women they all came forward they said we want to learn this we want to uh this is good for our business this is what will help us so they all started learning little by little small small initiatives and that picked up so skilling and then aggregating like you know what what is your what's aggregating anyone for a business aggregating is getting together all your resources and see for a district like narayan pet maybe it's about 100 kilometers apart there are many villages one village might have a printing another village might have a weaving technology another one might have a stitching unit so all these coming together instead of discarded multiple units working as multiple uh, you uh, different different units you all bring them to one platform and you get them to come together and pool their resources so if the if the uh, cloth is produced in one place the same thing value addition happens in the same place you paint it or you uh, uh, you do the stitching for it you do some other uh, packaging units for it all these come together so the women all learned this and then the improvements happened slowly slowly they built up their product line today they manufacture around 300 products from one product which was cloth weaving they moved to 300 products that all happened due to aggregation and in skill improvement so let's come to the la- uh, next one so these are the nine companies after the first company was formed they decided they needed more companies to uh, have uh, different uh, areas of production so uh, since they didn't fit, fit into the company rules and all that these were the nine companies which were created so these are the visuals of what they could do they did pottery they learnt most of them they didn't know how to transport their products also to the market so they learnt how to drive that was a amazing thing for rural women to do that we had even 50 year old uh, women learning how to drive so that was uh, their drive all they needed was that direction and that's how we could uh, produce a lot of things uh, these were the initial masks that they could do the ayurvedic masks and all and these are some uh, stories which were covered in the press about the women doing all these and uh, yeah you can see the improvement over the pictures you can see the qualitative improvement they have had it was not just one product it started with basic products then it moved in terms of quality it moved in terms of presentation it moved in terms of marketing ability so these are your lessons this was the impact that we could have today as on today aronia is a company with 14000 women all our shareholders by the way and run by 12 women who are the board of directors for this and they the, uh, today it's a six crore company so i'm proud to say from a rural area within two years they could move to a six crore company <laughs> how did they do that like i said all the lessons that we learned one by one we we learned one 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 journey over another so we had uh, uh, and then uh, let me come to this so these are some of the lessons that we learned along the way again i I'll, i'll rehash the first one is we made lot of mistakes on the way but we didn't let our mistakes stop us i've always been telling we we do make mistakes but learn from them treat them as lessons not as mistakes and that's what we did first all these 400 women who had come to me let me share uh 300 of them disappeared after the lockdown was uh, opened up <coughs> sorry why 
because their market opened up again, they had their supply. They traditionally used to rely on middlemen who would sell their products to better places in Hyderabad or Pune or Mumbai or some other place. And they said, okay, our need is over now. Masks are over, we survived the pandemic, now we move on. So how do, they all disappeared. But then there were these hundred group of women who stuck to their decision and who said, we want to do better. We have tasted some level of success and we have seen an alternate way of livelihood and a better way of livelihood. They used to get about 100 to 150 earlier while even weaving a sari. So how do they move forward? So they decided, let's do something better. This, this has a wider perspective, so let's do this. And they said, we want to diversify. We want to move forward. This was a decision they had taken and they did that. So we decided why we wanted a shareholder company because everybody is invested. The day the uh, government withdraws their hand from them, these women should survive. How do you do that? If you put your money somewhere, would you be invested? All of us would be. So we made them shareholders. They did contribute their money to it. So you ask me where did all the skilling and all this training and skill improvement, marketing, online, they're, they're actually very much online. And they have a website, they sell through Amazon and Flipkart. So how do they do all this? We didn't support them. They pulled in their own money, small, small capital. And they did that. So it was a collective decision. It was also a self-involved decision where these women could take these uh, uh, steps. They all decided, we have to do this. We, and we convinced them, this might be good for you, this might be bad. There are many times where our decisions turned bad. We actually uh, went on making some uh, uh, teas. And they made some uh, uh, chili powder and turmeric, organic of course. But they couldn't beat the better markets, which was a production center somewhere else. So you have to look at what is your specialization. Finally, they came back to weaves and as their primary product, weaves and handicrafts, which was what was the district was known for. And they improved upon those products instead of going to new products first. So that's how you learn from your mistakes. Trace your problems, work out on your solutions and move forward. So I think I'm really running out of time, so let me speed go through it. So this is what we learned, innovate, improve, perfection, move forward, new products, and sla uh, slackers always lose the race. So these are again the lessons that we learned forward. Let me speed up. And last, I, I covered all this during my uh, talk, so that's my time's up. So hopefully, all of you learn from these stories that we have shared with you and take this as a management lesson for your own future. Thank you very much. <laughs>